I was actually eating bread and butter and that butter had a very foul smell. So this is actually a chemical reaction. Have you experienced this? Yes, there are so many chemical reactions that are happening around us without even we noticing them, right? So I have one more common example that we see. I have few new iron nails and I have not used them. I kept it aside for few months and after two or three months, I saw them but they were not new anymore. They had brown layer powdery things on them, on them, right? Yes. What is this? What happened to iron nail? Rusting. This rusting and that cooking oil or butter, ghee, all these oils or fats going bad are all redox reactions. So we are actually surrounded by redox reactions. May it be coins getting rust, tarnishing of some metal, all those actually are redox reactions. What are redox reactions? So in this video, we will be discussing about redox reactions. Welcome to Baiju's 9 and 10. I am Tripti, your chemistry teacher. And today we will be discussing about redox reactions. What is redox reaction? By the name itself, we can say oxid redox reaction is a chemical reaction where oxidation and reductions are happening simultaneously. What is oxidation reaction? What is a reduction reaction? Well, let us understand in detail. What is oxidation and reduction reactions? Well, if a substance here we have a substance called A and that A substance gains an oxygen atom. A substance if it gains oxygen atom then the A substance is getting oxidized and the process is called oxidation. If a substance gains oxygen during a reaction it is said to be oxidized and the process is called oxidation. Cool. What is reduction then? Simple. The removal of oxygen atom during the reaction is called reduction and the, that process is called reduction. If a substance loses oxygen atom during a reaction, it is said to be reduced and the process is called reduction. Now tell me, is this the only way to uh, getting get oxidized and reduced? No. If a substance, there's, on, there's another way also. If a substance loses hydrogen atom, if a substance loses hydrogen atom, then it is also called, this scenario also is an oxidation. If a substance loses hydrogen during a reaction, it is said to be oxidized and the process is called oxidation. Uh, oxidation. Right? Yes, this is oxidation. What if an hydrogen atom gets added? If a substance gains an hydrogen atom, then it is called reduction. That process is called reduction. Cool? Got it? Yes. If a substance gains hydrogen during a reaction, it is said to be reduced and the process is called reduction. Cool. We understood two ways of oxidation and reduction. Well, there is the third way. Right? Yes. Say for example, there is one atom called A. And it has one electron in the outer shell, the outermost shell has one electron and that atom loses that electron and that atom becomes plus one. In this case, the substance is losing one electron, one or more electron, right? So losing an electron is also known to be oxidation. If an atom, atom loses an electron during a reaction, it is said to be oxidized and the process is called oxidation. Well, it's the correct ulta of this. If an atom 
gains an electron, if an atom gains an electron, that is called reduction. If an atom gains an electron during a reaction, it is said to be reduced and the process is called reduction. Okay, let me give you an example in this case. For example, let's take hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen has, if it, it loses one electron when it is reacting, right? It, it has only one electron. So, losing one electron will make hydrogen plus and electron, right? And let's take one more hydrogen plus it becomes an ion and there's one electron minus. Now these two electrons are actually accepted by the oxygen atom. One oxygen atom will receive two electrons from two atoms of hydrogen. Here hydrogen got oxidized because it was losing one electron whereas oxygen gained two electron and gaining electron means it got reduced. So this process is nothing but the formation of water. So in the formation of water hydrogen lost two atoms of hydrogen lost two electrons and oxygen one oxygen atom gained two electrons there you have oxidation and reduction got it yes so now you are, is this clear that how electrons losing and gaining of electrons is related to oxidant oxidation and reduction okay Cool. Now we have understood what is oxidation and what is reduct reduction. Let me take one example here. Here we have oxide reacting with hydrogen gives copper plus water. Now here if you see hydrogen after the reaction in the product you can see water. That means hydrogen has gained oxygen. So gaining of oxygen is nothing but oxidation whereas this oxide the copper has lost one oxygen atom. What do you call the losing of oxygen? That process is nothing but reduction very simple. So in this particular case you can see both oxidation and reduction in a particular chemical reaction where reduction and oxidation both are occurring simultaneously those are called what are they called? Redox reactions. Oxidation is nothing but addition of oxygen atom or the losing of hydrogen atom whereas reduction is nothing but the losing of oxygen or gaining of hydrogen. So that is happening in this particular chemical reaction right? Yes. Now this is nothing but redox reaction. Clear? Now you know what redox reactions are. Well let's look into this particular chemical reaction a little bit detail in, in, in deeper manner okay. So if you see here where we have hydrogen and the copper here. So here hydrogen gained oxygen it 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 gained oxygen it got oxidized. So the substance which gets oxidized is actually this hydrogen is actually reducing the copper oxide right the cuprous oxide got reduced by hydrogen so such substances who is as a person comes and you know steal something away oxygen ko steal karke leke gaya then that particular element is called a reducing agent a substance which undergoes oxidation and those substances are called reducing agent and the other one which gets reduced are called oxidizing agent, agents. Clear? 
So we have reducing agents and oxidizing agents in the same reaction of one particular reduce, uh, redox reaction. Clear? Now let us look at the effects of oxidation reactions in our daily life. The very first one is corrosion and the second one is rancidity. These two are the main and very common uh, reactions, redox reactions that you see in your everyday life. Let's look at the corrosion, right? So corrosion, it might be iron, any, any metal like iron or uh, some other metals. It, it's the gradual destruction. So corrosion is the process of gradual destruction of a metal surface by the action of air, which is like oxygen or moisture or the other chemicals such as acids. So corrosions, corrosion is the process of gradual destruction of a metal, su metal surface by the action of air, water or any other chemicals such as acids. So there are three types that we can see. Corrosion of iron, corrosion of copper and corrosion of silver. Cool. Let's see corrosion of iron first. So if you see corrosion of iron, the reaction is something like this, okay. Fe plus 3 O2 plus 2 H2O gives Fe2 O3 H2O which is rust. So iron reacts with oxygen in the presence of water, moisture in the air to produce rust. Cool, this is rust. This is nothing but the redox reaction here, this oxidation reaction. Okay, cool. Got it? Yes. So what happens? What is the effect of this? So this is a very, this has a very big role in the destruction of car damage to the car bodies or damage to the bridges or damage in the railings and damage to the ships. Yes, all these damages are happening because of the corrosion of iron. Well, this is about corrosion of iron. Now, if we see the next one, corrosion of copper. Let's look at corrosion of copper. So, what is corrosion of copper? Corrosion of copper is copper plus oxygen plus water plus carbon dioxide. Copper reacting with oxygen, water and carbon dioxide giving plus hydroxide plus copper carbonate. Right? Yes. So this is the green coating that you see here. CuOH twice and Cu Cu CuO3. This, these two are the products that are forming here the green coating. This is the corrosion of copper. Let's come to the third one. Corrosion of silver, which is like tarnishing that black thing that you see. So what is the reaction that actually occurs here is silver reacts with oxygen first to, re to produce silver oxide. And this, then the silver oxide reacts with H2S and then this gives Silver H2, Ag2S plus H2O, which is this product is actually the black coating that you can see on the surface of silver, which is silver sulfide. Clear? Yes. So this black coating is the destruction that is happening to the silver jewelry or any silver the, anything that is made of silver, if you keep it open on air, if you mix it with a little bit water, if you, you know, use it daily, then you can see those silver jewelry becoming black, right? Yes. So these, this is the reason that corrosion of silver is actually the reason behind that black thing that appears on silver. Cool. That's it about the corrosion. Coming to the rancidity. What is rancidity? You just saw me eating one bread and butter where the butter had gone bad, right? So fat and oil, which, which is, you know, 
upon keeping for some time open to the air it it has a foul smell and it react, reacts with oxygen in the air and it becomes bad that is nothing but rancidity in in very simple words so what exactly rancidity is well when fats and oils stay open in long open for long they get oxidized and they become rancid and their smell and their taste changes this process is known as rancidity so that becomes unfit for consumption you should never eat rancid fats or oil any cooking oil ghee butter anything it might be in that case you should not be eating it okay yes and this fats containing food items should be actually packed in an air tight jar so that it doesn't get you know oxidized it doesn't react with oxygen in the air that's why we keep it in the air tight jars clear so that's it about redox reactions and i have a very interesting question homework question for you so what is it chips packets are filled with gas especially nitrogen gas why and what is the relation between gases inside the chip, chips packets and rancidity so where you have to answer you have to answer it in the comment section below and i will be looking at all those answers and the homework heroes will be displayed in the next video cool yes so we have all the quizzes chapter notes strategy sessions concept practice sessions all these repository is available for you you can access complete repository by just by clicking a link that is given in the description and i will see you soon in the next class until then take care and bye bye